What did he say? He says he loves you, but he went in a different direction. I'm done. I'm quitting acting. Ah, oh, man, I'm driving through the hills. I'm sorry. One more time. We got another offer. It's a million bucks. It's to attend a wealthy gentleman's birthday party. I absolutely love this movie. I think this might be one of my top three favorite movies of all time. Great. It's incredible. For you, how do you play? I've heard that you said that this was the most difficult character you've ever had to play, and you're playing two characters. So how challenging is it to play a version of yourself and play two of them? There was no muscle in my body that told me I should do a movie where I'm Nick Cage or Nicky Cage. Uh, it was a challenge because, you know, I didn't want to embarrass my family. And I also had to facilitate the director's needs. And he was a fan of neurotic or backslash anxiety fuel. Nick Cage said, quote, that's the best Nick Cage, end quote. But I also don't feel that way in my own home life. So it was a balancing act. And the other thing is, as an actor, we want to hide behind characters and create characters, you know, infuse them with genuine emotion and, and, and imagination, but it has a different name. So it's much easier to do that when it's not you. But when it is you, you feel very emotionally naked and you feel very bare and, and very exposed. And that's the way I felt the entire time making this movie. I was very, I'm still recovering from it. It, it was not <laughs> easy. I mean, it really yeah. wasn't. But I'm happy to say that all involved were very thoughtful and sensitive. And we got somewhere that I think is enjoyable for everyone. I saw the movie in a cinema and everybody was laughing and it just felt so good. And I do recommend people go to the theater to see it because it is that communal feeling that we used to have when we would laugh together. And I recommend I that. agree. I agree, because I think it's one of those films that I'm going to recommend everybody see, because it is a almost a genre that they don't make anymore. I'm interested that you said you saw it, because I thought you had said maybe you were never going to watch it. It was going to be a little bit too meta for you. Um, I'm wondering, do you have so many film references, some of your past film references? Which one, which day for you was the most sort of surreal to, to revisit? Well, I only... Uh, well, first of all, I had to see the movie at a certain point because I was a producer on the movie and the two elements, the director and the studio started knocking heads and we needed fresh eyes. And I had to look at everything, take my half my mind, half my heart, shut it off, look at it from neutral and say, this is not working to the studio and this is not working to Tom. And we got to a place where all of us were happy. But I mean, surreal days, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, walking into Javi, Pedro's beautiful in the movie. It was a great performance. But walking into Javi's chamber of Nick Cage memorabilia, I would say that was the most surreal day. And looking at a wax statue of so-called Nick Cage and saying it's grotesque and I'll give you 20,000. I mean, all of it is so ridiculous and yet so wonderfully playful. But that was a weird day. I can imagine. And I mean, I mean when I, I'm about. sorry to interrupt, Nikki, but when I said, you know, it's trippy, trippy, uh, cool, but trippy, uh, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Um, which, uh, which moment do you think gave you the biggest Super 8 feeling? You've talked about having, you do roles that give you the yeah. Super 8 feeling. What yeah. moment for you gave you that? I'm so happy you brought that up. And the Super 8 feeling is when you know a movie's working. And uh, the Super 8 feeling is what you feel like when you have a Super 8 camera and you're a kid and you're making movies in your own backyard and you're only making movies because you love acting and you love story and you're not doing it for money and you're not doing it for Oscars. You're doing it because you love movie making. And I'm having that currently on a movie called Renfield. And in this movie on Massive Talent, I think I had that Super 8 feeling every time I was working with Pedro. Uh, I saw a kindred spirit in Pedro. He's a film enthusiast. We would talk cinema on camera and off camera. So it was like no acting, please. It was that super eight feeling. I really feel like this film is an homage and a love letter to your fans and people who have loved your filmography through the years. Do you have a fan encounter that is most memorable to you, either surreal, bizarre, or fabulous? Well, I had a I had one last night that was quite poignant. Uh, a woman said hello to me, and she said that she uh, had lost her daughter, sadly, to a car accident in 1997. 
Subsequently, my movie City of Angels came out and she said, I just love that movie because every time I hear Alanis Morissette's song and I see the movie, it brings me back to my daughter and keeps my daughter with me. And I thought that was very heartfelt and poignant and it meant a lot to me. If there was three movies that you would pair, if somebody's going to watch a Nicolas Cage marathon and they're going to pair three of your previous films with this film, which three would you recommend? Well, if I'm going to do it in terms of pairing, I would want to show the range. So I would say, let's do adaptation and then let's do Con Air <laughs> and then let's do Pig. Those for a pairing in terms of the range and being eclectic. But my three favorite movies would be uh, Pig, uh, Leaving Las Vegas, and Bringing Out the Dead. But I think Mandy has a, has a great place there, as well as uh, Lord of War. Oh, it just goes on. I'm very, they're all my babies. They're all my children. I care about all of them. I put up my heart and soul into my characters. If you were to play the Javi character opposite any actor in history, if you could play that person who's playing them opposite somebody who's playing themselves, who would you choose? Well, it's funny you mention that because I had that conversation with Pedro all the time. I said, you know, you've got the best part. I'll trade with you right now. I love Javi. I love that character. Uh, if I could play Javi, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've been Javi. I mean, I... <laughs> I've, I've worn out my welcome with people and, and, and tried to be geek out. And, but, um, you know, I, I would say Marlon Brando. They're no longer with us. John Lennon, Marlon Brando, James Dean. Uh, you know, it goes on and on and on. The guy that owns this house, what's his name? Javi. Javi. Mr. Cage. Excuse me. Is Javi going to want me to, uh, you know? I'm not sure I understand. Look, it's Javi. I am Javi. Nick Cage. It's unbearable. It's unbearable. You are so talented and is so- Is it massive? Is it massive? It's massive and unbearable. <laughs> Speaking of bears, how amazing is Paddington 2? It's so good. That was my only homework for the movie, actually. It was the, was only, it? Movie, it was the only movie reference I needed to polish up on. Okay, okay. So what is your th third favorite movie of all time? For people who don't know what we're talking about, they're just going to have to see the movie. That is such a good question. Oh man, it's so hard. I, 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 have, I, have, I have a list. What is my third favorite movie of all time? Do you know um, All About Eve? Do you yes. know that movie? Yes. Classic. <laughs> Let's just sit and talk about All About Eve. I'll plug <laughs> for, that the next, for the next five minutes. Um, okay, so it's my understanding you grew up watching Nicolas Cage movies, super fan. Um, how many have you actually acted out in your life? How many Nick Cage scenes have you acted out in your time? That's such a good question because it isn't necessarily um, acting out specific performances, but having those performances in your conscience, conscious, you know what I mean? I, can, yeah. I, I, I remember having moments where I, I, I don't even like, um, you have a reaction in your head and you say, thank you, I know that now. And it's like, you, 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 you realize that that's how it sounds in your head. And it takes a minute to be like, oh, that's what Nicolas Cage did in uh, Honeymoon in Vegas. Yeah. Um, and I'm always in my head going, thank you, I know that now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like indelibly marked into my, into my system. So, so I understand that the first day on set, you were a little bit in your head, like it was kind of surreal that you kind of don't remember it. What was that like? And when you act opposite your heroes, does it go the way you thought it was going to go? You know, with him, I think that um, him being uh, such a great, legendary actor, one of my favorites, I guess it wasn't a surprise that he'd be such a good scene partner, which yeah. can really anchor you to the story and to the moment and, you know, to the scene. Um, so that helped a lot because I was really scared and there was i was always bringing myself back from the moment of i'm my scene partner is nicholas cage right now we're in dubrovnik and i'm shooting a movie with nicholas cage and 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 he's my i'm 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 acting with him you know and yes. um and and but he was so good that it helped me kind of i guess focus in a way and just be in it with him well, you two are such a good duo. And by the way, in my interview with him, he talked about his love for you quite a bit. So the love oh is gosh. very mutual. It's it very, very mutual. mutual. That's... Real quick. So your top three very favorite sorry. Cage movies of all time. Okay. Oh, shit. So, okay. Wild at Heart, Adaptation, 
And uh, raising Arizona, which means that I have to kill so many of my other favorites. It's not fair. I know it's it's so tough. Um, so if you and so if Javi and Nick were to have a sequel, because I think they absolutely need to have a sequel, and they were going to team up again, and they got to write their own sequel and bring in another actor to play himself, who are you bringing in as your third wheel? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. <sighs> Let's see. Um, who are some of his uh, 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 great co-stars? Let's get Cher. Oh my God, I love that. that was Wouldn't such that be great? <laughs> I so thought you were going to say Harrison Ford because I know you love Indiana Jones. Well, yeah, Harrison <laughs> Ford, but it, we just kind of like keep it in the world of Nicolas Cage movies. But then, yes, if Cher's not available, uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah, an another one. Um, if you, I, I was starting to think like, did this movie make you think of what it would be like to sort of play yourself in a movie? And if you did, and you were playing Pedro Pascal, and you had a scene where you were playing opposite your younger self, as Nick does in this, how do you think that would go? How do I, you know, I don't even want to ask that question. <laughs> there were so many things that I didn't let myself think about in terms of the position that Nicolas Cage felt he was in playing Nick Cage. I, I do know that in seeing the movie, it almost feels like the part that I play is closer to me as far as being such a like earnest fan of him as an actor and also movies in general that um, that that it, it, it could have been closer to me than than Nick Cage was to Nicolas Cage. Which of your scenes would you like to reenact from one of your previous performances? What do you think uh, would be which, fun? Which of the scenes uh, with if from Unbearable from your Weight own or, filmography? Well, let's go back to Game of Thrones and let me win the fight officially. <laughs> Pick my teeth up off of the uh, arena. Uh, which was like a couple of minutes walk from where we were shooting this movie, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, in Dubrovnik, which was full circle for me. God, this place is stunning. What is your favorite movie? That's one of those questions that's impossible to answer. You can't just limit it to one. Imagine me and you, I do. Is it too much? <laughs> is this supposed to be me? It's grotesque. I'll give you 20000 for it. Congratulations. This is probably well, going to be one of my top three favorite movies of all time. I'm obsessed with it. Oh, stop. I'm obsessed with it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. That's so lovely. Uh, first, I wanted to ask you, um, I understand in high school, you were already a super fan of Nicolas Cage and you used to do something called caging. Can yes. you explain why you loved him so much and what you used to do? I mean, you know, for people, especially in my generation, National Treasure came out, you know, as you're growing up and he's always been, you know, you can follow his career up until you start being like cerebral enough to really appreciate his performances. And I think around that time was when I started getting into the caging because you see him and you know, as a young person, it's like mind blowing. It, it, you're seeing an acting style that you've never seen before, you know? Yeah. And the caging did come in. I, I, It's where you, you cut out pictures of Nick and you put them on someone's locker. We had a whole Instagram account for it and we tried to make it like a whodunit kind of thing. And people were very invested. So I, I think I, I brought some good, me and Nick brought some good to my school at that point. But um, he's just amazing. I mean, I don't know anyone who who isn't a Nick Cage fan. You know, it's he's fantastic and he's had such a storied career and it, it's so impressive to me. So, you know, I think I, I'm glad at least that I had I had good taste when I was younger. So that's good. Well, one thing I think you got to experience that a lot of us haven't got to experience before, but we got to do it in this film is the dad energy that he brought to this film. And I understand you're now going to have knife throwing on your resume as one of your special skills and that he sort of brought that dad energy to you sort of offset because this is like your first big role. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was very patient with me, which which was really lovely and, and unexpected to a degree. He was if I had any questions or I needed any advice or help, he was incredibly forthcoming and very you know, he was very open. So uh, we had a lot of downtime on set and we could talk, we could talk about shared interests or we could talk about, you know, which was insane to me. It was crazy. So he is such a good, I, I know he has a great relationship with his kids in real life, but it really shows yeah. through when he was talking with me, he's very paternal and very protective. And, and he was always making sure that I was okay and that we were all right. And you know, in the scenes, especially, it's very intimate for, for the both of us, you know? So yeah. we would always kind of check in and, and it was fantastic. I mean, I, I could go on and on and on, but he's he's like the loveliest person alive. Okay, so aside from Nicolas Cage, 
if you could play the Javi character in a future movie and play opposite any actress who was playing herself, who would you choose? Oh, or actor? God. That is very difficult. I uh, immediately, I would say if we could somehow do Elizabeth Taylor, I would love that. That would be a fantastic, that would be once in a lifetime. But maybe back in the day, like who's afraid of Virginia Woolf era? That would be very fun for me. Oh my gosh, she is amazing. Okay, so we're asking everybody today, if you were going to pair this movie, somebody was going to have a Nicolas Cage movie marathon and you're going to pair this movie with three other Nick Cage movies, what do you think would go best together? Ooh, three other Nick Cage movies. I would say number one, Face Off, for sure. Because, you know, there's a lot of references within the movie, the guns and everything. <laughs> that, um, hmm, the second one, I'm going to go with Raising Arizona because of the level... The way that the Coens did that is, you know, to a degree stylized in the same way that this movie is. Um, so I think that's a good pairing. And then the third one, I'm throwing it in everywhere, Pig. Everyone needs to see Pig. So I think regardless of how it fits, everyone should see it. It's like a life changer. Oh, God, I love this list. Okay, um, I know in the movie, does life imitate art? Because in the movie... He's giving you movies you should watch as a teen and you're like, generational gap, it's not working. Did you actually recommend a movie for him and did he recommend a movie for you in Oh, that was my favorite part of being on set with him. He has the best taste in movies of all time. So he recommended me, I'm really into horror, he recommended this amazing movie, Audition, um, that's very twisted. So I would say, it, not a general recommendation, but it's great. I mean, it's so cool to be able to be like, God, I got like a movie recommendation from Nicolas Cage. It's amazing. So I'm going to start like pushing that off. I'm going to coin it as my own recommendation and give it to other people as well. I'm Nick Frigger! Tom, I know you wrote Nick a letter sort of asking him to be in the film. How did you convince him? I know he said part of it was sort of the details of the script, but how do you convince him to be in this film? And were you guys like when you got the yes, because if you didn't get the yes, you were pretty much screwed. <laughs> yeah, we were finished. That was it for us. Uh, you know, Kevin and I wrote the letter together, actually, but we, we wrote it and we were like, you know, just trying to express to him our love, first of all. Our intention was to like celebrate his body of work. And then he's done so many different genres of film really well. It's different than a lot of different actors um, who lock into a particular thing. And we thought, Nick, this we, we said to him, this would be a really great opportunity to do all the different genres in one film if we can pull it off. And I think the big if there was, you know, uh, exciting to him. You know, it was exciting to him to, to, to take on that challenge. Any part you were nervous for him to read? The entirety <laughs> of the script, first of all. But Pretty much. The like, first, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the, the first act really was kind of the, because it's the part of the movie where he's, you know, more down on his luck. He's, you know, struggling to connect with his daughter. So he's got to kind of play like a, a bad dad. And so that was right. the thought, the, the part where we went, if he can just get past that, if he gets to page 50 <laughs> and where he starts turning into a hero, I think maybe we have a have a shot at this thing. So, and thank God he, he made it to the end and here we are. Um, the line where he says, Nicholas Cage, <laughs> was that written that way? Did he do that? How many takes are on the cutting room floor? Or did you only make him do it once? I'll say this. Uh, it was written as Nick F.N. Cage exclamation point. <laughs> Nicholas Cage came, we called action and we got that. Okay, and we finished and the entire crew's watching and I take off the headphones and he walks off set and comes over to Kevin and I and he looked at us and said, I wanted it to be transcendent. <laughs> and then he walked away and we were like, that's incredible. And he was like, you don't want something else, do you? And we thought, no, 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 no. That's something you're only getting with Nicolas Cage. And that's sort of the beauty of, of, of him as a performer. But then he did it like seven more times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like that was that was that was what it was. That was his director's choice. Cut. Yeah. The director's cut. Director's cut has got to be in there. Um, if you are going to pair, if you're going to take your film and have somebody watch a movie marathon, this film plus three Nicolas Cage films, which three films are you pairing with yours? Ooh, interesting. I think we have to pair it with adaptation, right? Yeah. Um, adaptation, Face Off, and let's call it. Moonstruck? Moonstruck or Leaving Las Vegas. Like, we want some big Ugh, action there's... comedy. I would go The Rock. Oh, The Rock. Okay, see, this is the problem. There's so many 
great Nicholas Cage. You keep remembering one that you're like, ah, this would be a you know fantastic version. But I think three different genres is the way to go. Okay. If you were going to, because you satirize with love so many Hollywood tropes, if you were going to satirize a Hollywood junket interview, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> Who's playing me? Uh, okay, well, yeah. Yeah, I would. I, yeah, how would we satirize a Hollywood junket? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough. Um, <laughs> well, we're trying to find a level of... Uh, uh, I'm I'm truly enthusiastic every for every interview. I know Tom's kind of playing a character. He's miserable uh, on the inside, but uh, yeah. my love is real. Yeah, I think <laughs> I would show you like how much like we're we're falling apart over here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sweating, <laughs> sweating. It <laughs> you out. might have been sweating from that question. If the studio said to you, you have to make a sequel, and you have to choose a new actor who's going to play themselves, it's really tough. But who would you choose? Oh man, I listen. I don't. We've discussed this at length, and we can't figure this question out. And it may sound like we're dodging, but we honestly have no idea who the next actor. Or would we be. would want an, an an actor to pl to do another version where they play Nick Cage. <laughs> that, like, was, that would be the <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis as Nick Cage. Yes, that's true. Christian Bale in full prosthetics playing Nick Cage, playing himself. That would. Be, I would watch that. Yeah, I'd watch that.